Rogers, all systems on standby. Over. <laughs> Listen, if you wonder if the horror movie that you are playing in front of your child is going to fuck them up, this is one of those examples. So back in the day, and I don't mean the 40s or 50s, I'm talking about the 80s. If you did not have a hard copy TV guide, you had no idea what was going to come on, especially cable channels. My family had a habit that they would flip around and when they saw that a movie was just starting, they would say, hey, let's just leave it on. The movie's just starting. No clue what we're about to watch. By the way, I know that this movie is tame to some of the standards that we're used to, but you know what? This is why you are here for the Horror Fiend Drive-In Theater movies that f me up double feature. I'm going to need a shot for this. Big worm! A mysterious world in the darkest depths of the Forbidden Zone. Thank you and good night. Uh, Professor, are we even allowed in the Forbidden Zone? Why, of course! It's just a name, like the Death Zone or the Zone of No Return. All the zones have names like that in the Galaxy of Terror. So when Galaxy of Terror came out back in 1981, I was only nine years old. And back then, when a movie would come out in the theater, it would be sometimes a year and a half, almost two years before it came on a premium channel, which at the time was HBO and Cinemax. So it's not like now where a movie drops in the theater and then like four or five months later, it drops on one of the apps. No, you had to wait a while. So I was about maybe 10, 11 years old and here we are. My family, we're watching TV and this movie starts. It looked sci-fi, so my parents were like, okay. You know, we watched Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. So to them, they thought that, you know, it's just gonna be like some space movie that let's go ahead and watch this with the kids. Big mistake. Fun fact. Did you guys notice Freddy Krueger and Captain Spaulding are in this movie? Dr. Lopez said there was something familiar about them. Yeah, watching this movie with these two, which might be like some of their early, early work, it adds an awesomeness to this movie. As you know, the movie is about paranoia and fear. And when Damea comes across Kuhad's body, she sees that he is covered in maggots or worms. I don't care, that shit is gross. But she starts shooting at the body to burn them away. Well, one gets away and you know, I guess her fear must have been worms, which I totally get because that's kind of the reason I don't go fishing. I mean, I guess you can use the fake stuff, but it's the worm part that I'm just, yeah, I don't like to touch them. Show you something. Make you believe. The Howling. Finish it. As Demea is outside trying to call for help, the worm starts to grow bigger and bigger. Kind of like the way that the monsters look in the old Sinbad movies. I'm gonna see if some of y'all remember what those are. But the thing kept on growing bigger and bigger. And then when she goes inside, well, she bumps into it. And you know, God bless my parents. At first didn't realize what was going on. So they were allowing us to watch like this worm on top of her. And then you slowly start seeing that the clothes come off and then you know yeah so the slime or something starts eating away at Demea's clothes not me yeah I was a slick one you see I had a mirror that I had hidden anytime we were watching movies so as I sat there with my head turned watching on the mirror I then got to see Demea get raped by a big worm and um it again tame to standards but when you're 11 years old and you're still playing with toys and you know gi joes and stuff like that and you hate worms well this was pretty fucked up to watch as a little kid and again thank you parents for 
having me be a fucked up person who enjoys fucked up movies because I think that this may have been one of the early, early ones that fucked me up. Cadet Stimpy and I are on a 36 year mission to the corner galaxy for a pack of gum. And I grow tired. I suspect Cadet Stimpy has been plotting against me. His mind taken by. Madness. Galaxy of Terror, a bona fide video nasty. If the thought of a massive space slug violating a woman by ripping off her clothes and thrusting deep inside of her offends you, well, it was actually worse. Extra frames of the worm fucking and both creature and victim climaxing at the same time. Mm, these were all left on the cutting room floor. Rightfully so. Erin Moran was smart. She was like, nah, I'm good on being penetrated by a big slug named Maggie the Maggie. Just explode my head into fucking bits of pieces and said. The film used recycled props and uniforms from various space schlock like Battlestar Galactica. If the suits looked familiar, well now you know why. I love the background to this film. Robert England, Sid Haig, Aaron Moran, Ray Waltson, even James fucking Cameron. The movie has some great talent behind all of the space man. Sid Haig hated his dialogue so much, he insisted on playing Q-Ho pretty much a mute. He would end up only having like one line of actual dialogue. Now we joke about calling Haig a future talent in this film, but back in 1981, Haig was already notorious for countless cult and exploitation films during the 60s and 70s. England would of course go on to play Freddy Krueger shortly after this film and Cameron hit it big with The Terminator. Not Piranha 2. And of course, we all adore Joni. A Galaxy of Terror is fucking cheesy and I can't express how much I fucking hate that ending. However, it's memorable and like every Corman flick before and after, it's just pure camp and fun. The oversaturation of the blue colors and even the goofy shoulder lamps that are way too big and impractical, they cause our heroes to be extremely backlit, making the movie even harder to see. But that ending, fuck. Go watch Galaxy of Terror, if not for the first time, then for the pure bliss that only a Roger Corman film can provide. You know what to do. Rest easy, sir, and thanks for the memories, you crazy bastard. What kind is this? This one's called the Brown Bomber, because when you smoke it, you get so stoned, you shit your pants. <laughs> about Galaxy of Terror was a giant worm raping a woman. I remembered no other parts to this movie. So when Rick said he was doing Galaxy of Terror, I had actually told him this story and I said, please, let me be on this episode. I need people to know that if you're gonna play this movie for your 10, 11 year old child, they may end up scarred like I did with the one scene in this movie that really sticks out. So enjoy the rest of the show. Ta-ta for now. Commander, is there any evidence of spacecraft quest? <laughs> Surfaces, Roger. I see nothing but bad blue. Check that. Unidentified spacecraft located 130-200 meters. Stand by. The entire ship is damaged and covered in rust. No signs of light. Located doesn't appear to be quest. Request permission to return to 
race to see their deepest fears. 